Welcome to the Remarkable Riparian Digital Short Course, an online education series covering the basics of riparian understanding. This self-paced learning program is produced by the Noasis River Authority in Texas, but the concepts presented here are pretty much universal to the function of all natural waterways. In Lesson 1, we're going to address a number of commonly held myths that can get in the way of good management of our creeks and rivers. Riparian landowners and managers often make well-intentioned but uninformed decisions, sometimes with disastrous consequences because they believe in these myths. For the good of healthy riparian systems everywhere, let the debunking begin. But first, let's make sure we have a common understanding of what riparian means. This is a term that has really only come into common usage in Texas in the past 10 to 15 years, even among land management professionals. A riparian area or zone is the part of the landscape that rivers and streams flow through, shown in blue in this picture. This includes stream banks, floodplain, plants, soils, and rocks that make up the ribbon of land that follows and interacts with the waterway. Areas adjoining lakes, reservoirs, and wetlands are also considered riparian areas, but this short course will focus mainly on rivers and streams. So, let's start busting myths. The first one is about removing water-loving trees like sycamores and willows to increase stream flow. In the drought of the 1950s, people thought removing trees along creeks and rivers would result in more water flowing to downstream reservoirs. And it does make some sense. Trees and woody plants drink water, so logically, removing these trees would mean that more water stays in the creek. Unfortunately, land managers and resource professionals back then didn't understand the vital role that trees play in maintaining a healthy waterway. Bear Creek is a good example of what can happen. Willow trees that once lined the banks were removed in the 1960s. Not long afterward, a huge flood came through and swept away the stream banks. Not only did the flood leave behind a bare, dry creek bed, but the soil ended up downstream, clogging the reservoir. All the wrong things happened. If the trees had still been there, they would have held the stream banks in place with their roots and slowed down the flood water with their trunks and branches. And while there was an increase in the flow to the reservoir during the flood, Intact stream banks hold and store water and are actually better for the water supply in the long run. Riparian stream banks are full of organic matter that soaks up water like a sponge. That water is released slowly over time, helping keep the creek flowing between rains. Eventually, Bear Creek recovered, as you can see in the bottom photo. It has regained its riparian sponge, but only after the grazing management program was changed to allow regrowth of vegetation. Time has been a good teacher in riparian management, and this mythical belief has been debunked. What is the natural path for rivers and streams? Straight and wide or crooked and meandering? Engineers have been trying to force rivers on a straight path for years, but nature has its own way. Many rivers have been forced into straight channels with the intention of getting rid of flood water more quickly. This picture shows the Walla Walla River, which was channelized and straightened to shed water from farms and cities more quickly. But when an extreme flood came through, the river broke through the artificial banks, returning to its natural meandering form. A curving or meandering river actually slows water down, reducing a flood's intensity. This is also called dissipating flood energy. Here's how it works. A river running straight through a valley that is 10,000 feet long with a 100-foot drop in elevation will have a gradient or steepness of 1%. If the river channel is a little crooked, its route will be longer, say 14,000 feet. This crookedness reduces the overall gradient by about a third. It's less steep than in the first example, so the water will move more slowly. Now, if the channel becomes even more curved, the river's route will be longer still. A river channel 25,000 feet in length running through the same valley will have a slope or gradient that is less than half of what the straight river had. When a river is allowed to develop a longer, flatter route, the result is that floodwaters slow down, the energy dissipates. 
This gives the water a chance to soak into the land, sustaining the environment and human activities such as agriculture. It also allows more soil and other sediments to be filtered out and trapped by riparian vegetation. Keeping water on the land is a sustainable way to conserve water and protect water quality, two things that are becoming more and more important in Texas. But many modern drainage projects have sought to get water off the land or out of the neighborhood as quickly as possible, giving up those benefits. Rivers have a natural meandering way of flowing. This myth has been debunked. What good are floods? Many people believe that floods are all bad or think their only value is cleaning out swimming holes. But when you understand how riparian areas work, it's easy to see that floods are actually beneficial. When floodwaters come down the river, sediment gets trapped by riparian vegetation. This filters the water, and the trapped sediment helps build up the stream banks and channels. Floodwaters also replenish the stores of water held in the banks. Floods are only bad if there is not enough space for water to spread out and slow down and not enough vegetation to trap the flood mud on the banks. Once you know how important and inevitable flooding is, it's easy to understand why it's best to avoid building structures in the floodplain and to allow a river to take its natural course. Floods are where the good stuff happens. Myth debunked. Without a clear understanding of the way riparian areas work, many folks believe that cleaning up and clearing brush on the riverbank is a good thing. However, both brush and trees are important in the riparian area. They help dissipate flood energy, trap sediment, and store water. People clear riverbanks to improve their view of the water, to get rid of snakes, to make their riverfront more park-like, or to present a clean appearance to potential buyers. With knowledge and understanding, these human needs can often be accommodated without the wholesale removal of vital trees and plants. A manicured park-like stream bank is vulnerable to erosion and doesn't do much to filter the water or slow floods. A full vegetated riparian area can be just as beautiful. Vegetation, including woody plants and trees, is vital to a creek's health. Myth debunked. People often think they are helping the river by cleaning up flood debris and removing fallen trees. But woody debris is an essential part of the stream. Over time, it will become buried in stream beds and banks, helping to stabilize sediments and whole banks and channels together, much like rebar in concrete. Anchored logs and trees also provide an ideal nursery for new riparian vegetation and good habitat for fish and other wildlife. Fallen trees and logs are part of the creek and should be left in place where they fall. Myth debunked. No one likes drought but the riparian area is one place drought can be appreciated. During drought, riparian plant roots grow deeper and deeper, chasing the falling water table. Eventually, these roots meet each other under the stream channel, creating an interlaced mass. This cradles the channel, holding it in place when flows return, much like a basket made of riparian water-holding roots. Droughts are not fun, but allow riparian areas to develop an underground root structure that strengthens the channel. Myth debunked. People want to do things. We are an action-oriented species. Riparian areas recover naturally. If recovery is not progressing, it is generally because some activity is preventing vegetation from growing. Instead of taking action to fix the creek, people usually just need to stop doing whatever they're doing that is hindering the recovery. The first picture shows a creek that has been under a continuous grazing program. Cattle, like people, will spend the hot summer months congregated near the water. With a change in the duration and season of grazing, the riparian vegetation was allowed to grow tall and strong and do its job. Nothing was planted, no machinery was used, no gravel was moved, no engineering was needed, and no money was spent. In this example, the river was kept barren by off-road vehicle traffic for many years. Once that activity was prohibited by law, vegetation began to grow. A natural recovery occurred. The sediment trapped by the first pioneering plants built up, allowing larger plants and then trees to grow. 
By 2013, the riparian area had recovered completely at this site. The landowner did nothing except document the recovery from a photo point. When the hindrances are removed, the creek will fix itself. Myth debunked. A good myth contains some truth, and without the knowledge and tools to separate fact from fiction, people are bound to act based on the logical-sounding mythology. Belief in these myths has caused much of the degradation we see on creeks and rivers. Debunking these myths is a solid first step in understanding riparian function.